Hi, I'm Callum Newins here for XTV, and with me we have Mr. Mark Mode and Hello. Alan Jones. Welcome, guys. Thank you, Hello. Um, I think my first question, and I'll give it to you, Mark, yeah. is I'm sort of interested. Where do you think the future of film criticism is going? Obviously, these days with sort of Rotten Tomatoes, IMDb, we're told in the media that they're the things that are sort of forcing um, box office. They're the things that people pay attention to. Would you agree? What do you think the role of the critic is in this sort of day and age? Rotten Tomatoes can only exist because there are professional critics out there doing the proper work. And all aggregator sites are inherently stupid because if you take an, an average of somebody says, I love this film, somebody says, I hate this film, the average score is it's all right. So I think, I think all those aggregator sites are total nonsense. I'm not interested in them at all. I'm only interested in knowing what people whose opinion I respect think about films. And as far as I can tell, despite the constant uh, message that film criticism is dead. It isn't. There are many film critics that I read and admire. Alan's one of them. You know, Wendy Eyed, Simran Hans. These are people that I read every week and I read them because I like their opinions. I'm interested in their opinions and I have no interest in aggregators. Fair. Very, very strong answer from Mark. Alan, what would be your thoughts on it? Well, I agree entirely. I mean, you know, Rotten Tomatoes is actually one of the worst things about the industry as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And where people keep coming across them and going, look, you know, this is what it says on Rotten Tomatoes. You see all these sort of like box office chart successes and they always quote it. I think it's a mistake. I think it's just ludicrous. It's adding just sort of giving them uh, something that they don't really deserve, I think, in a way, because it's, as Mark says, what are they? They're just sort of compilers of other people's opinions that are, they've been paid for, they haven't. I hate it as well, <laughs> so I'm the same. Okay, I think, I think we've got a fairly decisive message there. Um, what would you give as advice to students who are kind of looking to go into film criticism? I've always said, be your own voice. I mean, don't try and copy anybody else. As much as you, know, you admire Mark's you know, style and the way he puts things across, don't do that. You've got to have your own opinions, even if it goes against the grain of what everyone else thinks. I mean, I've often done that. I've gone again, seen a film, and I thought everyone's raved about it, and I've loathed it. And I've thought, well, I didn't like it, so I'm going to say that. And so that's what you have to do. And, of course, you have to do this in an entertaining way. You have to do it in a way that it actually speaks to an audience that makes them want to read from one sentence to the next. And if you can evolve your own style, mm. that what people really pick up on, they will always come back and think, you know, I like that guy, the way he thinks. I'm going to keep reading him. Fair, fair. And um, Mark, I remember I went to a talk that you were giving okay. and one of your pieces of advice was kind of like, never work for free. You were like, you kind of yeah. demand that you get paid. Obviously, that's incredibly difficult to do. Is there any way you can sort of establish yourself so that you can kind of get to that sort of negotiating point? Because obviously starting out as a student, for me to go, I demand to get paid, they'd go, mm. we've got a line of 100 other people. Okay. What would you sort of say to that? Well, interestingly enough, there is a very direct response to that. Is There's a friend of mine called Simon Brew who used to work at Den of He's now left and he's set up um, a magazine called Screen Stories, which has been set up entirely to encourage new voices and new writers. And he has two rules. One of them is that he doesn't mind what you've had published before. It's really a matter of whether you can write. And secondly, he pays everybody. Now, it's not a large amount of money, but it is a thing which has been set up deliberately to give people that platform. Because the thing that we've always said, I mean, Al and I have been professional film journalists for decades. And the thing is, if you don't value your work, then nobody else will. And it's one thing doing your own blogs and doing your own websites when you own that stuff. But if you're doing it for somebody else, then you should be remunerated. Even if it's a small amount of money, it's the principle of the thing. Yeah. Because otherwise, you're giving it to them for free and you're selling yourself short. No. My mantra has always been, no fee, no me. In fact, that became <laughs> so famous that somebody actually put on a T-shirt for me at one of my Fright Fests, and I wore it all weekend just so people realise that this is what you should do. Mark's absolutely right. I mean, uh. well, the people who do actually do the stuff for free really annoy me in a way because they are devaluing everybody else. I really don't like talking to these people because I yeah. think, you know, I'm sorry, what are you doing this for? You're taking work away from somebody who's probably a bit more professional than you are, but you're just the one who's willing to go and do it. Yeah. And also, they're willing to also be sold out. Remember, if you do it for nothing, you've got more to prove. And so therefore, a PR company can come to you and go, well, you know, we showed you this. So, you know, why didn't you say it was fabulous? You know, a dazzling roller coaster ride. You know, yeah. and that's the trouble. You can easily be balked when it's like that. But if you're being paid to do something, you can't be. Yeah. I also fully want one of those T-shirts with the no fee, no me. So if you decide to sell them. I it today. I knew that was something I was missing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sell them. I will be like customer number one. Don't worry about it. Um, and I think I'm going to bounce to both of you. Um, is, is it a rude question to ask for career highlight? Because career highlight sounds like 
you've had a long career, it's twilight years. That's not what I'm saying, but I'm just yeah, interested. Sure. I'll go first. You can go first. Yeah, my yeah. career highlight was meeting Alan. When I first came to no, I'm not saying this funny because when I first came to London, it sounds like I'm about to go into a Pogue song. When I first came to London, I didn't know anybody in the business other than Nigel Floyd, who I had worked as a, I'd worked at City Life magazine and I'd sub Nigel's copy. And the first three people I met were you, Kim Newman, and Nigel Floyd. And Alan and Kim and Nigel took me under their wings. And Alan particularly said, the, this is the, these are the rules of the game. This is how it works. And it was, and I still, funnily enough, we were just driving down from Southampton today. And I said, I remember bits of advice that you gave me in that first week, those first months. That thing about, you know, don't pretend that film directors are your friends. They're not. And, you know, never write, never review a film you haven't seen. Never, never say anything if you don't believe it to be true. But if you do believe it to be true, say it even if you think everybody else will disagree. And that has seen me very well through my career. And, you know, so that was and is a highlight for me. Fair. Now, your answer has to be meeting Mark Commode, because no, otherwise no, no, it's no. going to be awkward. I, no, not at all. Okay. I Because mean, <laughs> I, I had so many highlights before Mark came into yeah. my life. But I mean, it's a, I don't know, it's really difficult to say that. I mean, uh, things off the top of my head would be uh, interviewing Harrison Ford in front of 2,000 people at the Venice Film Festival. And everyone, I mean, I don't meeting Dario Argento, which is still one of the key things for me, um, you know, Quentin Tarantino quoting one of my reviews back at me. He knew it word perfectly. I was so shocked, and to, to this day, I don't know how that happened. I still don't understand it. So there's lots of different things like that. I mean, if that's sort of like the superficial side of it, of yeah. course. But I mean, you know, the highlight is just actually still being here, doing the stuff after, in my case, 40 years. Um, it's just amazing to me that I can still, uh, people still want to know what I think of films. So it's incredible. Nice. Thank you very much. I'm quite aware that we're running low on time. You guys have got to give a talk at five, so it's, it's now. almost now. <laughs> so I'm just going to say thank you very much for thank swinging you. by no, really quickly. Thank, um, you thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank Cheers. You.